Let's hear it for the best of the best. Let's hear it for Plaza Lazar Kristic threw this paper airplane over 200 feet at the global finals of Red Bull Paper Wings, making him and this plane the world champions of the distance category. So let's take a look. Now, as you can see, this plane is as much a dart as a dart can get. It is totally unconcerned with glide. It is all about minimizing drag and flying as fast and as far as possible. And as I mentioned, Lazar Kristic threw this over 200 feet at the global finals. But even better, this plane is not hard to fold. It is really a pretty simple process with only one semi-difficult step. And you can see it looks great as it is. But if you want to fold a plane that looks like this, you can download and print off this template by heading over to patreon.com slash foldable flight and supporting me there. Now there are three different ways you can hold and throw this paper airplane. The first, as you might assume, is just holding it and throwing it like a normal plane in something like this orientation. But the way Lazar actually threw it at the global finals and the way he recommends that you do too, is placing your finger on this back edge and holding it like this, which I thought was very peculiar. I've never thrown a paper airplane like that before. And I was really curious to see which of those two methods worked better for me. But then I also tested a third method as well, which is kind of a hybrid between the two, holding it like a normal plane, but placing my finger on the back edge. So let's see from the flight tests that I did, which way worked best for me. Now going into this test, I really didn't know what to expect, but I did think I would be able to throw this paper airplane pretty far using my normal throwing technique. I was actually disappointed to find that my worst throw was just 136 feet, and my very best was only 150 feet using this technique. So I had an average of 142 feet. But as soon as I flipped the plane over, placed my finger at the back and threw it the way that Lazar does, my distance has actually improved dramatically. My worst throw using this technique was 148 feet, which was better than my average using my normal technique. And my best throw was all the way up to 164 feet, which is still a far cry from his 200 feet, but I'm not nearly as strong as he is. So that's not all that surprising. So I had an average of 157 feet using this technique. But I still wanted to test this third technique where I'm holding it basically normally, but putting my pointer finger on that back edge. And you can see from my results, this absolutely blew everything else out of the water for me. My best result was 189 feet. My worst result was still 164 feet. And my average was over 170. So for me, at least this was the best technique, but I'll be really curious to hear how each technique works for you and whether you can beat my scores in each category. So with all of that information at your disposal, let's finally get folding. In order to fold this paper airplane, you're going to need an A4 sheet of paper, a ruler, and a pencil. But if you don't have access to A4 paper, don't panic because there's a free template in the description that you can download and print off that will give you A4 proportions. And even better, it actually has the measurements marked out on it, so you don't need the ruler or the pencil. And of course, the Patreon template works as well. So any of those solutions is great. And we're going to begin by folding this top edge here to the right edge, and your crease should go right through that top right corner, and you'll end up with something like this. Now your next measurement is going to be here from this corner to this point right here, 148 millimeters, and you'll make that mark. And down here, you'll make a mark at 45.5 millimeters from this corner, and make a line between them, because that's going to serve as the reference point to fold this edge to.
And then once you've folded that edge, which should look like this, we're going to kind of open these layers up, grabbing those two together. And you're just folding this point here right to the point where these layers are all kind of trapped. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'll open that up to show you what it looks like once you do it. And when you close it back up, it'll look like this. Okay, and now we're folding right over this edge here, just kind of wrapping the layers as tightly as we can. The tighter, the better. And you should have something like this. And we're just going again, wrapping it just like so. And now if you're using the full A4 sheet of paper, your measurement here from this point to the point where this little edge intersects that back edge of the paper is going to be 195 millimeters. And so basically on this other line here, we want to measure 195 millimeters from that point and make ourselves a little mark as our guide. Okay, and now I'm going to fold between those two points. I'm just taking my ruler and helping myself make a really nice crease right between the two, but I'm not going to make it very firmly yet because you'll see we're actually going to be reversing this crease. So there's my general crease. I'm going to flip this back open to this position and actually make that crease on this side of the paper. still between those two points, just like so. And now you'll see we have some layers that kind of go out beyond this triangular base that we're making. This is just breaking outside that kind of profile. So just fold that little edge back within and do the same thing over on this side. And once you've done that, you can wrap this back up into that position. And we'll go ahead now and wrap right along this edge, folding in the same direction we've been folding the whole time. And now we're going to take this section and fold it right over the back edge of that triangle, like this. And you want to open that up, fold that in, and fold that over it. And now we're just wrapping right along this edge again just like so, and the tighter, the better. Okay, and you can see we've got this little section that goes beyond the back edge. Basically, we are pulling that over that back edge, opening it up and folding in and closing it back up. And you guessed it, we are just wrapping it right along this edge here. That's basically what we're doing throughout the entire creation of this plane every time trying to wrap it as tightly as we can. You can smooth out some of this bubbling, but you know, it's just gonna keep bubbling as you do it, so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. And we're now wrapping again right along that edge. Wrap one more time here, and you can see this is your cue. We are about to cover up this little place where this layer is free. So like on the next one, you can see that will that little triangle is no longer visible. So that is your cue that when this little triangle is no longer visible, so one more time, that's when you're going to stop. Okay, and at this point, we are now ready to fold our plane in half. This triangular shape here represents the shape of our plane, and we're folding this edge here to this edge there. And this will be a little bit hard already, though not impossible at the front. It's got some really nice thick layers and you're just trying to line them all up to fold the plane in half, just like so. And now we're going to fold our wings. So I'm gonna put it in this orientation here and this is going to be not just difficult, but impossible at the front. You're not going to be able to get your crease all the way to the front of the plane, but basically you're taking this edge here to the bottom edge. So you can start in the middle, kind of work your way back, 
and at least get that lined up nicely. And then you're just rolling this as much as you can. You're rolling those layers over and trying to create the wings towards the front. But as I said, as this gets really, really narrow, you're not going to be able to accomplish that fully. And you're going to flip it over. And while keeping these layers tight there to this edge, here, in fact, we can wrap that around once just to keep that nice and tight. And we're folding this edge here to this bottom edge. Okay, and this is the point at which the folding sequence kind of changes a bit. Let me go ahead, set this down and get my wings nice and flat. So they're looking like that from the back, basically. And now we're wrapping this extra triangle around each kind of angle. Here's our keel of the plane. Then we're wrapping it around this edge here. And basically you're going to just continuously wrap it around, but you're trying to keep it really tight at every point. So hold these layers tightly, wrap it, wrap it around that edge, wrap it around this here, holding it nice and tightly, shaping it to the keel of the plane, wrap it around. And at this point here, when you've got just a little bit more, you can see it's not gonna wrap all the way around again. So we're looking at it from the top. You basically want to make a fold that's going to make this layer go straight across the plane perpendicular to your center crease. So I've just kind of marked a guide for myself there. I'm gonna unfold it, hold it in this position here, and fold right along that line that I made. And you'll see, so here you can see that crease I just made is right along that line. Now when I close this up, that edge goes perpendicular to the center crease. Okay, and now I'm folding right along this edge here. And basically our task is to make this flap be able to be tucked into this pocket. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to take this little extra section that goes beyond this edge here. And I'm just going to fold that behind that edge. So it fits within the profile of that edge. And then I'm going to fold right like this. And I'll explain exactly what I'm doing in just a moment. And that right like that. And basically what I've done here is this crease. I'm gonna highlight this crease goes from this point right here to the point where this layer would intersect that layer there. And then I've just folded this, the rest of this into a tab that can hypothetically be tucked inside this pocket. So I'm going to reverse this highlighted crease here, just like so. And now you'll see at least that this could all be tucked behind that layer into the plane. And this is the hardest step, but we're going to use our pencil and kind of open this pocket up enough that it's loose. And we're trying to tightly tuck this into that. And it can help to kind of curve this just a little bit as you do this, but it's gonna take some fiddling. And once you actually do get it, you're going to reassert those creases and make it hold nicely, just like that. A little bit of practice will go a long way and you'll get that step, if not on your first try, on your second or third. And congratulations if you made it to this point, your plane is finished. Thank you so much for watching this video and good luck flying. Thank you so much to all of my patrons who are supporting this channel and making these videos possible. You can become the pilot of your favorite foldable flight paper airplane and your name will appear next to the paper airplane you choose in each of my YouTube videos. So head over to patreon.com foldableflight and join the foldable fleet today.